السلام عليكم Why people go to when people are coming? They are going to there. They, they look. Look at them. They are going. They didn't go to the big gate. No big gate for the sister. Okay, no problem.
sit here, just uh, tell them, just leave the phone in there.
So that you may complete the period and that you declare the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may be guided. And the month of Ramadan was the month of guidance as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Shah Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an huda lil-nasi wa bayyinatim min al-huda wal-furqan 
that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a source of guidance for everyone. And it's important that we reflect upon this this guest, this noble guest which has just parted. Look back to Ramadan. Look back to what you engaged in, in worship. The fasting that you engaged in, the discipline of abstaining from food and drink and abstaining from haram. It's as though the journey of 30 days of fasting the month of Ramadan allows you to understand the strength that you have within you. There are at times where we feel to do something or we wish to leave something behind. Let me give an example. There are times where we have a habit that we know it doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we try throughout the year to abstain from I mean to abstain from it without any success. Then the month of Ramadan arrives. We have a better chance and we see ourselves being able to abstain from that particular thing. It's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to know that the very important and necessary things that you need in your life, such as food and drink, that you can abstain away from it for 16 to 17 hours a day. If it's food and drink, things which are necessary for your life that you can abstain from, then surely the things that you have chosen in your life as habits and so on, that you can abstain away from that too. And as we part from Ramadan, I would like to advise three things. The first thing that I would like to advise is to really contemplate back on the month of Ramadan. Did you do more ibadah? Did you pray more? Did you recite the Quran more? Did you feed people? Did you give charity? Did you increase in any way of the worship that you were doing? Our answer should be, yes, we did increase in the, in the worship that we were doing. Know that every single deed that you done in the month of Ramadan that was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah multiplied it from 70 times according to one narration all the way up to a thousand according to other narrations. So in the month of Ramadan, you pray two units of prayer, two sunnah prayers that you pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from you. On the Day of Judgment, when we are all presented and we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, helpless, and Allah's rule is the only rule on that day, you look back to those two units of prayer, what you find in your scale is a thousand units of prayer. And you're asking yourself, I did not pray one thousand units of prayer in that one night. I did not pray 70 units of prayer in that night. I did not pray 100 units of prayer in that night. But it was because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that from you. And then he multiplied it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So know that every single action that you did in the month of Ramadan, let that be the recitation of one verse of the Quran. Let that be sunnah prayers that you prayed or that you abstain from haram throughout the day. Each and every single thing that you did, you, your iman grew. Your iman became stronger. Whether you feel it or not, whether you recognize it or acknowledge it or not, your iman grew. You became closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows that us as human beings, we love to blame others. When things aren't going well in our lives, it's very easy for us to blame the government or it's very easy for us to blame so-and-so. And that will be the case on the Day of Judgment. When you have the people who spent their lives in misguidance and in sins, they're not going to confess and acknowledge and surrender to the fact that they were sinful, but rather they are going to go and blame shaitan. Allah knows the case that we are going to blame shaitan. On the Day of Judgment, people go swarming to shaitan and they say, you misguided us. And then they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them, but if it's too late, 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he's done for you, O oh believer that loves to blame others throughout the month of Ramadan he withheld the shaitan if shaitan was truly the problem then I withheld the shaitan so there's no one to blame but yourself and that's why it's very very blameworthy in Islam that you leave the month of Ramadan and Allah hasn't forgiven you so you need to look back to everything that you have done and know that the shaitan upon his release on this day will want to destroy everything that you did the shaitan doesn't show kindness the shaitan doesn't care about the tarawih that you pray the shaitan doesn't care about the quran that you recited he is back and what he wants to do is anything that you did consistently he wants to break that you pray Isha in congregation most of the time in Ramadan you pray Fajr in congregation most of the time in Ramadan the shaitan will make sure and try his best to get you to stop doing that he wants to destroy it he tries to make up those 30 days where you became closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first advice is contemplate back on the month of Ramadan. Know that you have strength within you to be obedient and you have the strength within you to abstain from disobedience. And that is only from the soul's bounty and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing I would like to advise as we part the month of Ramadan that we hold within our minds, that we think about, is that we try to be where the believers are. Try to be around believers who make dua. Believers who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in the Quran. And then he says, وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Endure patience Endure patience With the people who are constantly calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In the evening and in the, in, the, in the morning Seeking the noble countenance of Allah Seeking the reward of Allah Seeking to please Allah That's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam If there's anyone seeking Allah and making dua to Allah Surely they only make dua to Allah Stemming and reaching out from what the Prophet has taught them وسلم, they don't become those people except their connection to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, but Allah says and addresses his beloved وسلم, and he says endure patience, be around the believers there are times when believers come together according to the authentic narration in Bukhari and Muslim that when believers come together and they recite something from the Quran there are angels which become present. We are sitting here in this, in this new masjid. And if the veil was to be lifted, if the veil that Allah has casted over us that we don't see the unseen, if the veil was to be lifted according to the words of the truthful and the trusted beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, we will see angels surrounding us and angels present. And those angels will be reporting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, look, your slaves have come together and they're seeking you, and they're praising you, and they're asking for Jannah, and they're seeking refuge in you from hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have they seen hellfire? Meaning the person who has seen hellfire, compared to someone who hasn't seen hellfire, will be completely different. A person who has seen hellfire will, won't be able to sleep, won't be able to sleep if they've seen hellfire, and then they'll be on, constantly doing ibadah. But for the believers like me and you who haven't seen hellfire, but we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hellfire, that pleases Allah. So he says, what are they asking? They're asking for you to save them from hellfire. Have they seen hellfire? No, they haven't seen hellfire, ya Allah. How would they have been if they were to see hellfire? The angels say they would be even more intense in asking you to save them from hellfire. And tell them, Allah, then Allah says, tell them that I have granted them safety from hellfire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what are they asking for? And then the angels say, they're asking for your Jannah. And then Allah says, have they seen Jannah? Meaning, you know, if we have seen Jannah and the, and the, 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 the blessings in there that we can't comprehend, what no eye has never seen, no ear has ever heard, we would not be comfortable sitting with our families, we would not be comfortable doing work, we would only be engaging in ibadah. But Allah says, have they seen paradise such to ask me for paradise? They say, no, they haven't seen paradise. 
I don't think any one of us have seen paradise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how would they have been if they were to ask, if they were to see paradise? Then the angels say they would be even more intense in asking you for paradise. Tell them I have given them paradise. So whenever you come together, there's this conversation. We don't believe it's just you two, you guys coming together in the, in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are the, the angels present. This dialogue is taking place anytime. If you go to a hundred gatherings like this in a day, there are hundred sets of angels who are reporting that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I telling you this story when I'm trying to bring the point of telling you to be with the believers? Because in that very narration, that same narration, the angels report, they say someone is in the gathering who didn't come for the right intentions. Someone is in the gathering who's not doing what everyone else is doing. Someone in the gathering, i.e., maybe not on the same level as everyone else. They're having a difficult time at work, they're having a difficult time with their family, they've just come to the masjid and they're just sitting there, just, just hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever they can. Maybe they have, they're not engaged as everyone else is engaged. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, include them also in the forgiveness, include them also in granting them paradise, include them also in granting them safety from the hellfire. That's from solely just being where the believers are. Spend more time with the believers when they come together seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was an order from Allah to the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the final thing that I would like to advise inshallah before we begin our prayer, is that you maintain a connection to the Qur'an. We all have this Qur'an on our phones, we all have the Qur'an copies in our, in, in our households. It's likely we may have recited some more Qur'an this month, which has gone past. It is likely we had hoped to do one, two, three khatans, but then we'd struggle to do even one. Maintain consistent in reciting the Qur'an, even if that's one page a day, or if that's one juice a day. If you memorize something when you were younger, if you memorize the first five or the bottom five parts of the Qur'an, the bottom two parts of the Qur'an, try to strengthen it. Try to strengthen that. Because the scholars say, whoever reads the Qur'an regularly, their heart becomes enlightened, whether they like it or not. Whether you want your heart to become clean, whether you want your heart to become enlightened, the Qur'an will enlighten it, whether you like it or not. So look back to Ramadan with, with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tried, he attempted that you could see the strength that you have within you to stay upon obedience and to abstain from disobedience. Be with the believers. If there's a gathering, go. If there's a lesson, go. Don't allow yourself to go a week without going to the masjid or without going to a class or without going to a gathering of remembrance. These things keep the hearts alive. Has it not come time for the believers for that their hearts become tranquil, that their hearts become humble in the remembrance of Allah? And that they don't be like the people who were given scriptures. We have been given scriptures. We have been given the best of scriptures, the Quran. But then Allah says, Long extended periods whereby without them reading the book, without them connected to the book, so then their hearts became hardened their hearts became desensitized. If they do good, if they miss an opportunity to do good, they don't feel sad. If they sin, they don't feel remorse. They don't feel regret. The, se the sensitivity of the heart is gone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring sensitivity back into our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people who are with the believers. That Allah makes us of those who endure patience around those who call unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the evening and in the morning seeking his noble countenance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the elite of the believers. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us that he allows us to use the strength from what we have maintained from the month of Ramadan to maintain us in an obe obedience throughout the year. And if there's anyone who has gathered here today, or from your families and your loved ones, and on this day has planned and intended to engage in disobedience, we ask Allah, the turner of hearts, the changer of the hearts, that he changes and diverts their intentions away from disobedience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be true believers on this day, expressing our gratitude to him and abstaining from disobedience. Don't allow the shaytan to destroy the reward that you have been working throughout the whole of Ramadan. Don't, it's not worth it. If it's your boys and they have a plan and there's this, it is not worth it. Maintain on that. Maybe just by you cancelling the plan that you had today, that Allah gives you enabling grace for the rest of the year. 
give a sacrifice. What sacrifice have you given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates the suffering of the believers all around the world, our brethren in Palestine and in Sudan and in Yemen and in Kashmir and all around the world in Somalia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate their suffering and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in bringing forward aid. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same when He has united us that He unites us with the beloved of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam in yawm al qiyamah. Wa sallallahu sallam ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillah ya rabbil alayhi Shall I give just a quick <coughs> reminder of how to do the, how to do the prayer? Right, so insha'Allah we're going to be praying two units of prayer. These two units of prayer are sunnah, sunnah uh, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Eid that we pray. We're going to begin with making our intention and then entering the salah without takbir al ihram as usual. And we bring takbir al ihram when we bring it down, then we read the sana subhanahu wa hamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jaduka wa la ilaha wa And then the imam will then add an additional three takbir. Every time Allahu Akbar, hands down. Allahu Akbar, hands down. Allahu Akbar, and then hands and then join the hands. Then there will be a recitation of the Quran, the Fatiha, and the Surah, and then Rukur, and then Intidal, and then Sujood. In the second unit of prayer, it continues all the way to the second chapter of the second unit of prayer. So when we recite Fatiha and the Surah, we are on our second unit of prayer. Let's do it again, inshallah, we're not fasting today, are we? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now we are on midday, subhanahu wa Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, my brothers, my sisters, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless you all. I think you couldn't be fortunate enough, subhanAllah, to be here in this masjid on our first date, subhanAllah. If I say this to you, that just 12, 13 days before Ramadan, this masjid was a complete building site. But I think you're going to think that this guy is crazy. SubhanAllah, this is exactly what my team thought when we took the decision just 13, 14 days before Ramadan that we have to finish this masjid, make it available for the
So that you may complete the period and that you declare the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may be guided. And the month of Ramadan was the month of guidance as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed as a source of guidance for everyone. And it's important that we reflect upon this, this guest, this noble guest which has just parted. There are at times where we feel to do something or we wish to leave something behind. Let me give an example. There are times where we have a habit that we know it doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we try throughout the year to abstain from I mean to abstain from it without any success. Then the month of Ramadan arrives. We have a better chance and we see ourselves being able to abstain from that particular thing. The Quran will enlighten it whether you like it or not. So look back to Ramadan with, with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tried, he attempted that you can see the strength that you have within you to stay upon obedience and to abstain from disobedience. Be with the believers. If there's a gathering, go. If it wasn't a time issue, I wouldn't have asked Shaykh to stop online. He was giving some most most beautiful advices. He's actually shown us what Jahannam is and how to prevent ourselves from Jahannam. And he's actually literally take us, taken us into that journey that how we're going to acquire Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter us into Jannah through his mercy. Ameen ya Rabbi. So, one thing that makes us very unique, my brothers, no, no fundraising today, by the way, so do not worry about it at all, inshallah. No fundraising at all, inshallah. One thing that makes Clayhole Islamic Centre very unique, subhanAllah, that it's a very diverse community. From our top management all the way to the bottom and in the community, alhamdulillah, we have this stance, we've been on the forefront on this agenda that we want to make this community a diverse, all-inclusive community. So when a person enters into this masjid, he doesn't feel isolated, he feels welcoming, alhamdulillah feels that SubhanAllah has come to his own place. And it has happened many a time, SubhanAllah, that a new face has appeared and he said, I, um, I just love the place, SubhanAllah. So we should continue to build on that. We should educate our ch children towards that, that, that whatever we do, we make sure it doesn't become a particular sect or an individual community. We should continue to support this cause, inshallah. We have a lot of strategic plans, alhamdulillah, for the masjid, as the masjid has just opened, and we can see there's already a need of development in this masjid in terms of more space. So, what I would suggest, my brothers, is that, inshallah, like anything else in our life that we do, we allocate certain amount of funds for different, 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 different sections 
in our life, for different purposes in our life. This is our first experience to have a masjid in Klebo. We should allocate every year a certain amount of money from our earnings, a certain percentage of our earnings towards the masjid. That's the way to inshallah build this masjid, to make this space. Look at the marquee, subhanAllah, it's cold out there. It was cold throughout the Ramadan in Taraweeh. May Allah SWT bless these brothers and sisters, but they were alhamdulillah coming and they were attending Taraweehs. So we need to build on that. The only way to do it, rather than uh, me or my other colleagues to come in front and stand before you every now and then and do fundraising, if we can all inshallah set up a certain amount of standing order and, and donate to the masjid or every year, every year, you know, X amount of money, 5% of my earning, 7% of my earning or 10% of my earning if I give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the building of the masjid. Masajids and madaris are the sanctuaries of Iman, Wallahi brothers. When we are in stress, when we are in depression, when we are in troublesome situation, we head towards the masjid, we face towards the masjid, we come to the masjid, we come to ulama as scholars, we connect ourselves in the masajid with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the only way to, as Sheikh mentioned, subhanAllah, to protect our Iman, to stay in the gatherings of people of Iman. So we have to build on that, and to do that, inshallah, the easiest way is like you learn from some other community, mashallah, very successful communities, that they allocate certain amount of percentage of money towards their charity work. So we, if we do that, inshallah, you will see huge difference huge development in this community and in our next generation inshallah ta'ala the last thing inshallah as you know that alhamdulillah in our vision we have many different things that we have been carrying on lot of activities through our from our uh, shop floor but now we have a bigger space inshallah we have to build on all those different 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 sections inshallah community development we have to look after our less unfortunate people subhanallah in the community, we have to act, activate our youth, we have to utilize them through sports and recreation activities, we have to do lots of other educational activities in this in this locality, our sister needs a lot of education, educational um, activities, so we need to accommodate them, subhanAllah, we have to accommodate our brothers, we have to do a lot, lot of different workshops for the challenges that we have, subhanAllah, in the current day and age. So we will continue to build on that, my brothers, we need your support, as you have always done. We'd like you to carry on. Please do support as much as you can throughout the year. Not in just in Ramadan, not outside, but we should just continue and keep coming to the Masajid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted all from us as Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was building the foundation of the Baytullah, the best masjid on the planet with the help of Ismail alayhi salam. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami wa alim. We ask the same dua of our forefather Ibrahim alayhi salam. We show humility to Allah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for barakah and his mercy. Barakallahu feek. Jazakum Allah khair. If you can all inshallah stand up for more roses. Allahu Akbar, 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 Kabira, Walhamdulillahi Kathira, Wasabhana Allahi Bukratan wa Asila, Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, Wana Sainu, Wana Stafiru, Wana Udubilahi, Mishururi, Al Fusina, Women Say, Ati Ahmadina, Mayahdi Hilahu, Fala Mubilla, Women Yubilil, Fadan Tejida, who were the Yen Mushida. أحمده وأشكره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه وخليله أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وسراجا منيرا جاء ليتمم مكارم الأخلاق ويخرجنا من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد ومن ذل المعصية إلى عز الطاعة ومن الغفلة إلى الذكر واليقين ومن الكفر إلى الإسلام ومن الإلحاد إلى الإيمان ومن الإساءة إلى الإحسان اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد
اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد فيا عباد الله إني موصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله والمواظبة على ذكر الله وكثرة الاستغفار والرجوع إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى أعلموا يا عباد الله أن الله سبحانه وتعالى قال في كتابه العزيز ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تهتدون فإن شهر رمضان قد ول عنا نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى القبول فيما مضى وأن الله يتقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وقعودنا وهكذا يا عباد الله فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يقول ألا أن لربكم في أيام دهركم لنفحات ألا فتعرضوا لها فإن هذه المواسم الخير جاء ليطهرنا ليطهرنا من حبنا إلى الدنيا ومن إيمان ومن إمالتنا إلى 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 السوء ومن حبنا إلى الدنيا ومن حبنا إلى غير الله وكل ما يلفتنا عن الله سبحانه وتعالى فهذه المواسم علينا أن ننطلق من شهر رمضان ملبين ومكبرين ونكبر الله على ما هدانا لا نرجع إلى أي من المعصية ولا نعصيه سبحانه وتعالى ونحفظ ما ننظر إليه بأعيننا ونحفظ ما نستمع إليه بآذاننا فإنها كلها نعم من الله سبحانه وتعالى وأن يوم القيامة يوم العرض عليه سبحانه وتعالى نكون مسؤول عنه فإذا جاء شهر رمضان يطهرنا ويزيدنا في هدايتنا فلنا أن نشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى ولا نصرف ما أعطانا الله سبحانه وتعالى من نعمه إلى معصيته وعلينا كذلك يا عباد الله أن نشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى ونتمنى ونلح على الله سبحانه وتعالى أن أن يفرج عن إخواننا أينما كانوا فحيثما اجتمعنا وبيننا سرور وفرح بمقابلة في هناك أخواننا حول العالم ما مسهم من ضر وما مسهم من من أذى علينا أن لا ننساه ونلح على الله سبحانه وتعالى في أفراحنا وفي أحزاننا وفي جميع وفي مجامعنا وفي مساجدنا لعل الله سبحانه وتعالى يكتب لهم الفرج القريب العاجل ولا نترك ما كان نواظب عليه في شهر رمضان والله يقول وقوله الحق المبين إذا قرأت القرآن فاستعذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ثبتني وإياكم على الصراط المستقيم طهرنا وصفانا ونظفنا بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله عظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة واصيلا الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه يكافئ ومزيده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله وأطيعوه تفلحوا وعلموا يا عباد الله أنه والله لن تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولن تؤمنوا حتى تحاكوا فأفشوا السلام وصلوا الأرحام وأطعموا الطعام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخلوا جنة ربكم بالسلام واعلموا يا عباد الله أن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بالملائكة المسبحات بقدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنين فقال مخبرا وآمنا لكم بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد المفتاح باب رحمة الله عدد ما في علم الله صلاة وسلاما دائمين بدر ملك الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارض يا رب عن جميع ساداتنا الصحابة أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وعن شهيد المحراب الناطق بالصواب أمير المؤمنين الفاروق سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وعن شهيد الدار من استحيت منه ملائكة الرحمن أمير المؤمنين ذي النوري سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وعن أخي النبي المصطفى وابن عمه وباب مدينة علمه أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب والحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة في الجنة وريحانة النبي من نص السنة وعن أمه محورة البتور الزهراء وعن أمها خديجة الكبرى وعن عائشة الرضا وعن جميع ساداتنا الصحابة وأمهات المؤمنين وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى من اتبعكم يهدي الإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأنا معكم وفيهم برحمة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم أذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم هيئ لهذه الأمة أمر الرشد يعز فيه وليه ويذل فيه عدوه ويعبد طاعتك ورضاك يا رب العالمين اللهم تب علينا توبة نصوحة اللهم بدل سيئاتنا حسنات تامات حتى التبعات اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ثبتنا على الحق والهدى ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإصرافنا في أمنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر أخواننا المستضعفين اللهم انصر أخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي السودان وفي اليمن وفي كشمير وفي الصين وفي الصومال وفي جميع أنحاء العالم أينما كانوا مظلومين اللهم أشغل الظالمين بالظالمين واخرج المسلمين من بينهم سالمين منصورين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعميتكم ونذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون عيد مبارك وكل عام وأنتم There are more plastic, plastic in the box. Eh? Plastic bag. No, we don't need any. Need more. Okay.
Inside there, so we can space, space inside, in front, space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone wants to pay for Tirana, brothers? Please make sure you pay before you. Huh? Hey. <laughs> Five people. Anyone? You want to see? Oh, yeah, 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 there's a new one they're moving there now. <laughs> what the hell? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to Fitrana? No, no, no. in front. This is one that's under. So, if anyone has to pay Fitrana before you say this, I'll say this. Just. The Shaykh mentioned the khutbah of Eid is the part of Eid Salah. So once the Salah is finished, please stay behind and listen to the whole khutbah.